Chris, what is our fifth main topic today? This one comes from Nathan Allen. Hey, John, Avatar The Way of Water has been crushing it at the box office, earning the title of highest grossing film of 2022. As it sits at $1.71 billion at the box office, there looks like this uh, film is not slowing down. Considering you didn't think this movie wouldn't make $2 billion, what are the chances of this passing the $2 billion mark? And what would this mean if James Cameron has three films that have grossed over $2 oh, billion? Geez. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot for writing that in, Nathan. And yeah, listen, the, the last year and a half has been a cacophony of two different extremes, right? On the one extreme, some people saying uh, Avatar 2 will be the first movie to make $3 billion, to which we've always, it's not going to make as much money as the first Avatar. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't think it would hit two. Like I thought it would be a big hit, big hit, but I, I didn't think it would make two. I thought 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, which is where we're at right now. Then there's the opposite side, this large group of people who are like, nobody cares about Avatar. No one's going to go see it. No one's going to go see it. It, it. It's, you know, nobody cares about Avatar. Everybody realizes now that Avatar sucked and no one's going to go see it. And for a long time, Rob, you and I have been telling people, do not doubt James Cameron. For a lot longer than other people. Yeah. Now everyone now everyone says that. Yeah, now everybody says we cool were, we were not now. we're not bandwagoners here. No. We were we We've were been there. telling everybody for for a long time, don't doubt James Cameron. Never. All he does is squat down and crap out hits. That's what he does. That's simply what he does. Now, the movie is now sitting at one point seven billion dollars and has already become the seventh think about this. In the history of Hollywood, the tens of thousands of films that have come out, produced in Hollywood and around the world, this movie, as of today, and it's still going, is the seventh largest box office film success in history. Let's bring up the uh, the chart there, Jonathan, on uh, on my screen. But as we see it there right now, sitting, it has just passed the number eight film of all time, Jurassic World, that had $1.6 billion dollars. Avatar, The Way of Water, now, still going, is the number seven all-time film. And it's only about $200 million behind Spider-Man No Way Home, which is impressive. And then, of course, you're getting into the top five with Avengers Infinity War. There are currently only five films in history that have made the $2 billion, that have hit the $2 billion mark. Only five in this most exclusive of clubs. Obviously, James Cameron's Avatar, Endgame, James Cameron's Titanic, Star Wars Episode Seven, and Avengers Infinity War. Only five. I would say this. It is not a foregone conclusion that this thing's going to hit $2 billion. It still has $300 million. By the way, is about as much as Black Adam made in its entire run. <laughs> $300 million dollars for a film going into its fourth and fifth weekends is not a small amount. As a matter of fact, this past week, it only, <laughs> what a weird way term to use, only made $200 million. And it's only going to make less this week than it did last, and this is going to make less. So it is not a foregone conclusion that it'll hit $2 billion, but it is well within reach. It is well within reach now. And while I thought, that Avatar was going to be a big smash hit, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 billion dollars. I did not think it had hit two. Completely convinced it's not going to hit the original, which it's obvious to everybody now it's not going to become the first $3 billion film. But two billion today is well within reach. That Avengers Infinity War and Star Wars Episode Seven are within reach. I don't know that it can get to his Titanic movie at 2.2. That's still $500 million away. But Spider-Man No Way Home, very within reach. Avengers Infinity War, very within reach. Star Wars Episode Seven, very within reach. And if this happens, and it's able to go, excuse me, excuse me, and nudge Avengers <laughs> Infinity War out of the top five, that means James Cameron, one guy, will have three of the top five box office films of all time three now you can say hey well you know the the russo brothers who i adore have two of them yeah but the russo brothers entries in there 
are really Kevin Feige's entry, entries in there. And they were films that were built with a 12 year buildup and a 20 film buildup with 15 of the biggest stars in Hollywood. There's a lot of asterisks to put that Titanic solo standalone movie avatar one and two, the only two in the franchise. I mean, we are literally talking about the top five films of all time and three of them belonging to one guy. Do not sleep on the significance of this. It's, it's undeniable at this point. And moving forward, if you are still in the doubting James Cameron business, you are certifiable. If you are still in the doubting James Cameron business, you are absolutely certifiable. It's pushing six billion altogether. There <laughs> are three films. For three non granted Avatar 2, now you can qualify as a franchise. But basically, non-franchise films without 10 years of buildup, without 17, 18 films coming forward, without 18 of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Three of the top five of all time. This is astonishing. Guys, we want to thank one of the sponsors of this video, DraftKings. Guys, the NFL playoff picture is now locked in, and your go-to place for wild card round action is DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. So to kick off the road to Super Bowl 57, new customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can get a no-sweat bet each day of the wild card round this weekend. Just place any NFL bet of your choice, and if it loses, you'll get a free bet back up to $10. Action so good, why bet NFL playoffs anywhere else? And if it were me, I wouldn't be betting against the Bills or the Bengals right now. So guys, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code Campia, C-A-M-P-E-A. -E New customers can bet $5 on the NFL and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code Campia. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Anyway, Rob, you see these numbers. It's hit the 1.7. It's now the seventh highest grossing film of all time. What do you think the ceiling for it is? I think it's going to overtake Force Awakens, which is at 2 billion 68,000 or something. Yeah. 68 I think it's going to sit right underneath Titanic. That's where it's going to... You think it's going to nuzzle into the fourth place? Nuzzle into spot. the fourth place, and that's where it's going to stay. Um, maybe more, who knows, re-releases over the next couple of years. But what's really interesting about this, too, is is James Cameron has been embattled through this. It's not like people say, oh, of course Titanic's going to be a success. That was a nightmare to make. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah it was, there's a lot of drama Paramount and Fox both had to share that. I mean, it was a nightmare. People were like, what's going on down in Rosarito? And people thought it was he was insane. And and making Avatar, nobody even knew, is this going to work? You know, and, and I've heard things to the extent of, of like, even now with, with the one thing about Avatar 2, Way of Waters, is he was also shooting Avatar 3 and 4. Yeah. So, at this, so when they talk about the budgets of these movies, you know, they're amortized across these multiple films. But even now, you know, they wonder, are they going to be able to get the effects done by Christmas of 2024? Are they going to get it out? So he's always like in battle. No one, no one from a production standpoint is like, oh yeah, he'll, he's great. He's, 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 not, he, he's coming up with, yeah, you know, no one's ever done an underwater motion capture. I think I'm going to try that. He had to come up with new equipment that didn't exist to do underwater motion capture, just like he's wont to do. I mean, that's pretty pretty spectacular isn't that uh the new nirvana album cover there you go right. um and uh i i think that cameron will do it i think that it's going to out it's going to go over two billion dollars they'll probably leave it in the theaters just to make sure that happens but until quantum mania comes out which is a yet another disney movie uh, i mean it's got real really no competition so you know we'll see and once again you know john when i saw this movie the second time i, I really this is a family movie yeah, for all the action yeah. adventure, it's about a mother and father, and their functioning family of their two kids, their adoptive daughter, and their cousin, their crazy cousin Spider, and it's about <laughs> it's about a family, and in a way, there's a wholesomeness to it that who, where else are we getting that from? And that was not something I would have expected, and I think that undercurrent is one of the reasons that these movies resonate. Yeah, I saw it a second time, and again, without giving any context. You, you, people who've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. The scene with Natiri, the second time hit me even harder. Like, oh, damn. Hey, everybody who's seen the movie knows what I'm talking about. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, like, like the hair on your arm stands up. Anyway, Chris, we are, look, this thing may fall short of $2 billion, but even if it does, I think it catches Spider-Man No Way Home, and it'll get in the top oh, six. Yeah. 
And then it's not much further for it to catch up to Avengers Infinity War, Star Wars Episode 7. We're, we're talking about the possibility of three of the top five films of all time belonging to one director. How high, what do you think the ceiling for Avatar 2 is right now? And how significant is this? I really do think it's going to hit $2 billion. I really think it's going to. It's got legs. And my friend Scott alone is going to get this movie there. He's seen it five or six times in theaters. <laughs> so good on you, Scott. Look at you supporting James Cameron. I mean, we've said it so many times on this show. You got to bet on him. No matter how you feel about James Cameron as a person, you can't deny he is a fabulous director who can deliver blockbuster films. He knows how to get an audience's blood pumping. And sure, is the third act kind of a greatest hits moment where we've got a lot of Titanic, a lot of Terminator 2? Yes, but I'm here for it. Yeah, it was it's awesome. so freaking fun. It's so great. Anytime water's on fire, like, fuck yes. I love that. <laughs> so I really think this movie can go the distance. And the fact that he is going to have that number of films in the top five, potentially, just speaks volumes. I mean, I've said it before on here. There, there was a mentor of mine who said there's a difference between being cocky and knowing when you're the best. And sometimes James Cameron walks that fine, fine yes, line. Yes, he does. But there are moments where I'm like, all right, Jimmy, you know what's up. He, he he makes money. He might want you off your lawn, but he'll get you into theaters. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, somebody asked a question a while ago. I, I, I think it was last week. Somebody wrote in a question. I can't remember exactly how they worded it, but it's like, okay, you're a producer. You're trying to get your biggest returns. And you've got the option between getting Steven Spielberg, who I believe is the greatest filmmaker of all time, and James Cameron. Who do you go? Without hesitation, James Cameron. If 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 the question is to get my biggest returns, yeah. Steven Spielberg will make the better movie. James Cameron will make a great movie, but that knows how to thrill the audiences and will get the audiences out. And you're talking about a guy who hasn't who didn't just fall ass backwards in luck with Avatar. This is the guy who made my favorite action film of all time in True Lies. He did Terminator. I mean, he, he he's been able to make just make all this stuff. It's not a good business to be in the James Cameron doubting business. And it will, will people ever learn? And by the way, I don't know. Look, I still don't think the Avatar 1's box office mark, I honestly don't think it'll ever be broken. I really don't. I, I don't think it'll ever be broken. But I mean, who knows what happens once Avatar 3 comes out and Avatar 4 comes out and it starts to have get, it starts to develop some of the advantages that like Endgame had with we had a bunch of build up to it and so who knows? I mean, I don't know. A lot of things to do here. Uh, Ray, you still haven't seen this movie. Nope. What's it going to take? Uh, probably this week sometimes. <laughs> We've been saying that for three weeks, but maybe this week. Ray, yeah, Anne's maybe. been trying to get Ray to go. Go is like, oh, I don't think I'll be able to make it. But we'll see. One of these days you'll see. Anyway, you'll guys, love it. You'll love it, Ray. You'll love mm -hmm. it. All right. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? I mean, it's already the number seven biggest film in history, which means three of the top seven belongs to one guy. It could very well become three of the top five, maybe even three of the top four. What do you think the ceiling is right now for the success of Avatar? And how significant do you think it is? Or do you want these people that just thinks, ah, who cares if James Cameron's got three of the top five? I, I don't know. I think it's a big deal. Maybe you don't. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.